Hello, everyone, and welcome to UCF Expressions. I'm Charna Davis Weesey. On today's show, a nationally known artist and professor is making a trip to a theme park much more than just a fun vacation for his students. Join me in welcoming Robert Reedy, and we're going to be talking about how undergraduate students are doing things that you never thought could be possible. We'll talk about that first. We have so much to talk about with you, and I'm, I so appreciate you taking time to be here. I know you're really busy. Thanks for having me. Now let's talk about, we're talking about the Hard Rock theme park, and brand new Hard Rock theme park in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and your kids have actually created something that will be on display there. Before we even get into that, how did this come about? Well, um, this actually started a couple of years ago with a, a local person named Roger Owens. He owns Roger Owens Realty, and they um, have an industrial park right down the road here from UCF. He called up and said, I want to design uh, some public art for my industrial park, um, and this is the theme, this is my budget. Would you be interested? And for once, someone called with a budget. So, we <laughs> which were, is very, very, very rare in academia. It is very rare. <laughs> and so, and it was pretty substantial for us. It was about fourteen thousand dollar project. So we did it. Uh, transformed my classes into competitions. Uh, uh, a winner was selected. Uh, they went through a fabrication process, and the piece was actually installed. So that got the ball rolling, and then one client led to the next, and we've gone from uh, Roger Owens Realty to Harris Rosen Hotels and Resorts to the Lexington Hotel downtown to Hard Rock Park, Harley Davidson, uh, and we're getting ready to work on a project for Giovanni's uh, this coming up summer B term. Now let me ask you, is this one of these situations that I've had in my life where people will come up to you and give you this amazing opportunity that you've never done before and really don't know how you're gonna do it? Say, sure, I can do that. How am I gonna do this? To, that, to actually well, do the actual plan of how to change your classes. Exactly, and that's what's transformed my class is because um, it teaches uh, students how to adapt, overcome, improvise. All they have to know is where the resources are to get this done. And they can do just about anything that needs to be done. It's just um, a matter of believing that you can do it and doing research, you know, and, and budget planning and, you know, things like that to make sure you can deliver on the goods because you have to sign a contract, okay? So, and there are deadlines. So, um, yes, we can design and we, we tackle anything. The current project we're working on with Giovanni's Italian Restaurant is to design a uh, $60,000 bar for their restaurant. So uh, if it's manufactured, it's fabricated, and it's, if it's fabrica fabricated, it's designed, and somebody has to design it. So our students are involved in that. Okay, at the risk of sounding incredibly ignorant about this type of art, what is this career? What is this called? Well, it, it, it goes under many names, actually. When I was in school, it was more uh, like industrial design. Now it's called environmental design, and, and it's all-inclusive. It uh, includes anything from signage to graphics packages to digital imaging to uh, animation to uh, three-dimensional public art to uh, landscape architecture. It's kind of one-stop shopping, and there are more and more firms that are popping up all over the country that are taking advantage of that. Is so, this a major here? Absolutely not. It's a <laughs> private venture on my part. <laughs> it's an your undergr major. <laughs> an underground uh, <laughs> movement that I'm trying to start because I know my students need this experience and it's something that I never got when I was in school and I guess I, you're just supposed to learn this stuff by osmosis in some way, you know, so. Well, that's why I'm asking because it's, it seems like what a cool thing to make your life's career and your life passion. And, and it's the kind of thing that as I'm involved in this university and I'm finding about all these things I don't know about, I'm saying, well, how did one decide to become this? The, and they, it was serendipity for, for you, for uh, you guys correct. and your students. That's uh, correct. You kind of know the stuff is out there, but uh, it's not really talked about much in school because it's... Um, not to not very conceptual right um, and it's more uh, an application of how practical uh, image making and, and whether it be 2d or 3d overlaps into conceptual uh, theories and development 
I never really saw that as separate. Uh, it's taught that way through our history, you know, the applied arts versus uh, studio art. But when you look at the history of art for real, you look at Giacometti made coffee tables, Noguchi made paper lamps, Picasso made pottery. Uh, I mean, you know, so it's, when you get in your studio and there's no professor or university around you, uh, uh, you realize, well, just because I got a degree in painting doesn't mean I can't make something that's three-dimensional. Right, an artist is an artist. That's correct, that's correct. So uh, uh, I've always been bent that way as a young person growing up and uh, uh, a doer of many things, but a master of none. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people that would argue with that. <laughs> but, um, but I just wanted to introduce this into my class and it's been extremely successful and the acceleration process in, in learning has been phenomenal. It's completely changed my pedagogical theories about how to deliver information in a classroom. So these kids are as young as freshmen and they're actually working on real life projects. Absolutely. It's experiential learning that is so important. Tell us about the Harley Davidson thing. Well, um, Harley Davidson uh, came to us. Um, at, well, actually, I actually go out and conjure up these projects just by knocking on doors. Um, but uh, they uh, came to us and they wanted us to design a all-weather covering for a, a motorcycle and a trailer. And uh, we said, sure, we'll take that uh, opportunity. And we uh, entered into all my classes compete against one another uh, for the right to fabricate or be selected and fabricate the project. So we have a picture actually showing some of the con uh, concept board. You, you do, from beginning all the way uh, uh, to end uh, through the fabrication process. And uh, the winners then go into the next semester in a program we call Advanced Design Lab or Ad Lab, and that's downtown at the Expo Center. Um, and there they redesign and fine tune their design to fit the client's specific needs. Uh, so they're working hand in hand with uh, uh, mechanics, engineers, designers, uh, architects that uh, know exactly what they want. So it's uh, it has a price point that has to be met. You know, um, so a lot of, they're learning that they have to sacrifice a lot of ideas sometimes because it can't be done because an engineer says it's a great idea, but it costs too much to do it this way, or maybe it's not safe to do it that way. So um, these are things that I never learned until I got out of school, you know, so, and they're learning this as freshmen and sophomores. So the trailer's just finished. We're going to put it on our website, um, uh, sell it nationally. We've already got eight orders. We went to bike week uh, and took the uh, a prototype there and everybody uh, went crazy over it. And uh, it's a recreational trailer that hauls surfboards, coolers, and your uh, beach umbrellas if you want to go to the beach or whatever. Or if what you're a, a fisherman, you can carry your tackle. What a great with you. resume piece for a kid. Absolutely. Imagine this student in an interview. <laughs> I mean, it, they, they just blow everybody out of the water. And in fact, the problem that we're having right now is to keep them in school. Uh, the Hard Rock Park project, uh, Adam Milovich, who was one of our um, kids who was really good in graphic design, they hired him right out of... Uh, out of the class. He's a full-time graphic designer in Myrtle Beach right now. Which is great, but it would probably have been good to have the degree, huh? Yes, <laughs> yes. So we're, we're, we're kind of revising some of that and, and counseling students on the... <laughs> we ups, sign something, you have yes, to... Yes, <laughs> the ups and downs. But they, you know, they paid him, you know, a, a very handsome salary, uh, give, gave him a place to stay, and uh, the job experience is unbelievable. I imagine the kids really want to take your class. Tell me about the Hard Rock thing. I love, this is the coolest looking thing. Well, Hard Rock came to us and said, ask us to design um, a series of four sculptures for a themed area in their new park called uh, Heavy Metal Graveyard. Okay, so this is right up the student's alley. I mean, they were just all flipping out over that. But uh, the, the beauty of this project is we got to work with Nassau Company in down, uh, downtown Orlando that does a lot of the theme park uh, projects all over the world. The Lego Park in Germany, they did um, uh, uh, Atlantis in the Bahamas, and you know, you can just go on in Disney World, uh, Universal Studios. 
Um, and so the, uh, the students that made it through this competition and were selected fabricated their pieces at Nassau Company, and then these were installed at Myrtle Beach at the Hard Rock uh, theme park. And we're going up uh, this next weekend uh, for the dedication and interview the students and see these pieces actually installed. Now tell me about the winner, and I'm also trying to wrap my brain around this. Now these kids conceptualize what the finished piece would look like, but do they know actually how they're going to make it? No, it's, uh, and, and nobody knows that, quite frankly. What we do is provide them the training the first half of the semester that meets the academic requirements of our accreditation bodies and departmental regulations and guidelines that we've voted on and adapted as a faculty. So they all meet that requirement and then that prepares them to tackle the final project. The beauty of the outside client come in, coming in is it reinforces attendance policies, professional conduct and behavior, deadline, what is a budget, uh, those kind of things that you know you would almost have to get another degree for because Hard Rock Park does not care about your flat tire, whether it's raining. Another test. You know, um, <laughs> a sick relative, I've got a cold, you know, that's a $400 million project that's going to open whether they're ready or not. And also when, because I have a design business as well, and you, when you go into it and you're learning about it in school, you have all these grand ideas about your creativity, but your creativity only goes as far as what your client wants to see. That's exactly And that's correct. probably the hardest thing to deal with. And you know, and, and, and the myth is, is that that doesn't apply to studio artists. Oh yeah. Because Unless it you does. Want to, don't want to sell anything. I mean, yeah, <laughs> my, my kind of shtick is uh, teapots. I'm kind of uh, recognized internationally as a teapot maker or whatever. Well, what do you do when you start selling teapots, and, but you change and you want to make bottles, but the galleries still want teapots, you know? So there's all these ethical, aesthetic uh, dilemmas that one uh, meets as an artist slash designer that quite often don't get talked about or dealt with in school because this is a closed society. No matter how hard we try to make it an open uh, culture, uh, we're, students are pretty protected here. I mean, what's at risk here? A grade? Come on. I mean, in the scheme of things, um, uh, in 25 years of being an artist designer, no one asked me what my GPA was. No one asked me who my teachers were. You know, they wanted to know what's in your portfolio, do we like it, how much does it cost, and will you have it here on time on a regular basis? You know, if you can't pass any one of those four, we don't want you. <laughs> and will you listen to me? Because, you know, it's so funny you say that because one of my design teachers who, and a drafting teacher, I remember somebody arguing with him about the grade, right. to get a higher grade. And he said the exact same thing. No one's going to ask to see your report card. Just do it right. Right. And it was really something. And it was, it was such a wonderful thing that it was eye-opening, but then some of the people in the class who, who cares you gotta care too well the most important thing this has taught me and I think my students is is that just because you have to understand what is going on in the real world it is not at the expense of creativity and conceptual development you can still be on the cutting edge of creativity and design uh, and still uh, know about the practical side of things and how to conduct yourself as a professional. And that's what these students are learning. And they learn how to morph. And when we come back, we'll see the pictures of that incredibly cool piece that's in Hard Rock. Don't go away. We're back. Welcome back to UCF Expressions. We're talking with Robert Reedy, who is an internationally known artist and sculptor and a professor here that is taking his kids to places that you never thought they could go. We're talking about the actual piece of artwork, industrial design, if you will, that has been installed in Myrtle Beach, South, South Carolina at the Hard Rock Cafe. I bet these kids were killing each other to win this particular <laughs> challenge in your class. You know, um 
they are now. When they first started, I think it was a hard sell to begin with, actually, because it's a lot of work. This course is extremely demanding, um, and uh, quite frankly, my, my student evaluation suffered early on. Because it's like a full-time <laughs> job, and they have other classes too. Well, yes, and. and um, what it's caused me to do uh, in my course is rethink about uh, how I evaluate things. For instance, in, in my class, uh, all late projects are an F. Uh, absolutely no uh, extenuating circumstances of any kind. And uh, on first examination, you might think of that as like cruel and unusual punishment. But when these kids leave school, um, uh, and there's a major presentation due the next day by uh, their firm for a client, or if they're making a presentation for a, um, a gallery or museum, that presentation will either continue or not continue. There won't be any negotiations about that. Okay? Hard Rock opened in May, had that's, to be in there. <laughs> that's correct, that's correct. So what I've done is, is although I'm pretty tough on them with that, I, I try to support the students by adding other experiences that will allow them to, to um, earn extra credit to offset the times when these things do occur, because they will occur. And, and in the grading process, to me, when something like that devastating happens to a student, they need to focus on their family and not school. You know, I mean, you need to get your priorities straight. So it's been an, an indoctrination process, almost a deprogramming if you will, these students come in and I say, look, I don't want to hear email, I don't want to be inundated with emails about why you can't get this done or you're late for that, or that it don't even bother. Just come to class. Take care of your business, get well, and then come to class. But know you're going to be held responsible for missing these things. I, what I found is, after the initial shock of this went through my department, is that the students are responding to it. Uh, they, it actually makes the classroom a lot more collegial. Uh, the pressure is off. They don't have to make excuses all the time. I'm not giving them the, you know, this look, you know. Um, and it's made it just a, a much more pleasant place to work, you know. Um, so uh, I, I can't see any downside to it. Plus we have these businesses coming in like Hard Rock and they really, they're not very tolerant with missed deadlines at all. I mean, so uh, it's, it's helped me and my students rethink uh, and grow uh, in a very positive way about how to present uh, information, how to get things done. What can we really do in 15 weeks, you know? And quite frankly, what I found is, is that it doesn't take me 15 weeks to teach a subject. It's a format that's, what, 1,200 years old that uh, hasn't changed except for adding the internet and computers to it. So I'm a little um, skeptical about the efficiency of our educational system right now. I, th I think we need to be more innovative and think outside the box. We demand it of our students, but yet we put it right back in the same old tired formula. Um, and I don't think it's good business, you know. Um, and. Uh, the other byproduct of this is that my classes don't cost this university one penny. This summer we will, will have brought in uh, close to $100,000 in projects um, just during the summer. That's not during the main academic year. And I might add, at, at, at no watering down or diminishing the academic standards or conceptual development of our students, um, it's it's just preparing them for what's out there, as opposed to that being a shock and a, and a trauma for them to endure uh, you know, when they enter the job market. They're better interviewees, um, they're better prepared, uh, their portfolios are stronger, um, they're more competent, you know, and to me that's what I'm trying to do as a teacher. Tell us about the, the winning piece that's at Hard Rock. Well, actually, that's an interesting process because, boy, did we learn something there. Um, <laughs> they, Hard Rock commissioned us for four pieces. By the time OSHA, engineers, and fabricators got finished with it, only two are going to be installed, but four were picked. 
So the students, again, there's this thing, well, but, but wait, I, I won. But the problem is, is the that I'm paying the bill, right. you've been paid, and I'm telling you we're only going to build two, and this is why. So again, there's like, it's not a democratic society. Right. I mean, in the applied areas, you know, it's, uh, and when I'm in my studio, I can paint and do whatever I want to, you know. Uh, I can, uh, and I can do it whenever I want to. But you step outside your studio sometimes and, and you're uh, under contract for something, that's a whole nother ball of wax and with a whole different set of criteria and responsibilities. And these students are learning this and they're responding in a very positive way um, to levels that completely surprised me. So long story short, the two pieces that were selected were a piece called The Birth of Rock, um, which is a large, um, almost Henry Moore-like female figure who is pregnant with uh, ear, um, what do they call these? Earphones. Headsets. Headsets. On her stomach because when her baby was being bo born, <laughs> she let her uh, baby listen to rock music <laughs> and this sign coming out of the, the navel. <laughs> her hand, the baby's hand coming out of the navel. <laughs> Uh, and then a, a piece <laughs> called The Piano Monster, which is this giant walking mouth with these uh, David Bowie boots and piano keys for teeth and a, and a uh, Dalmatian covered uh, piano bench that's, you know, 20 feet high. It, these things are huge. Um, <laughs> that will be installed uh, in Heavy Metal Graveyard and, and uh, um, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And so you got to go, got to look at it. That must have been so rewarding, yes. especially for the kids. Yes, and um, well, to see the project through like that, from beginning to end, you know, that's that's real important. And again, imagine that student in an interview. You know, uh, they they know how to talk to engineers. They know how to talk. They know about OSHA and safety guidelines. They know how to do a budget, because the budget has to be real, or, or Hard Rock Park wouldn't approve it. You know. Um, and then the whole conceptual and academic side of that where they're developing as, as a student, you know. And I also learned that with the creative process, uh, you, there are so many bumps in the road and your creativity is, is bridled and then you're thinking, I, I hate this, I want to do it, and then it's done. And he's like, oh, I like this. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. do like this business. Hard, Hard Rock Park was a real interesting client. They came in because they have creative people on their staff. Um, we went through our competition, they picked some pieces and they said, okay, we're going to um, uh, start all over again. And my students went like, what? And they said, yes, uh, we want everybody, we want, to we want you to throw all your drawings away. Uh, we want everybody to bring in uh, sketches uh, of your ideas on napkins. Uh, well, <laughs> napkins? Here's Mr. Reedy saying, edges, 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 you know, craftsmanship, everything's got to be detailed and, and built exactly correct. And now they're telling us to bring in napkins, you know? And so um, they, they just started all over again, developing, redeveloping some of these ideas and fine tuning them based off of these things off of napkins. Did it they was, ever tell you why? Did they feel they were looser doing that? Yes. Or is that what it was? It wasn't as... They wanted to get them out of the academic environment. Right you know, um, and into something that was more like the way they would develop an idea. And so I was learning about different ways, you know, pedagogically and whatever to deliver ideas, you know, because I was like the syllabus, da 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 right, da da right. So right now, this uh, class that we're doing right now, which is called, uh, 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 it's a toy company and that students have developed, developed their own toy company and toys called Igmo Toys Incorporated. Don't ask me why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, uh, they're having to do a business plan from scratch, develop their own product line, uh, and it's all started off of just, you know, scratches on paper. The students develop their own syllabus, they develop their own creative timeline, and then it has a contract on the back where they have to sign it, and that's how I govern the class. Okay, so if it's if it's a hard class, it's because they made it that way. <laughs> <laughs> they can't come to you about That's it. That's right. <laughs> it's like and I just make sure signature. we meet all our criteria and the guidelines and things that, that we know we need to learn in that class. So. It's it's so nice to, to to hear this because for artistic people, you wonder: is there a place that I could make a living being artistic? 
in oh, whatever in whatever constraints. But you usually don't know that. You don't, and you I, just, I don't know why other than uh, uh, historically, the artist suffers and the artist uh, does heavy drugs and the artist is tormented and. And I've, only makes money after they're dead. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I, that's just not true. It's just simply not true. It's true in some cases, but I know some engineers and attorneys and, and physicians that are that way, you know? I mean, that's just a human dilemma, um, but it has nothing to do with art. I mean, you can make a good living as an artist and as a designer, you just have to, uh, you know, be prepared, plan for success instead of uh, waiting for failure, you know? and and it's really about just preparing yourself, I think. And knowing where to go. Exactly. I didn't even, I didn't even know that these industrial design companies existed, let alone here yeah. in Orlando. And you're really opening up a whole new world to these kids that probably had no idea what they were getting into when they signed up for your course. Well, that's true. And that, that's the idea is to give them options. I mean, that's one thing I think uh, the university's mission is. I mean, you had a uh, guest on earlier who was in marketing but is now doing film. Um, I was a pre-med major uh, who, dro who declined medical school to come back and study pottery. <laughs> so, I mean, really that's what I see one of the main missions is a university and that's why I love universities like UCF as opposed to art institutes because here I'm not learning math for artists, I'm learning math. Uh, I'm interfacing with history, psychology, engineering. And that's really one of the goals here and one of the goals of the, the division called CREATE as well, to bring interdisciplinary, bring people from all over the university together. And that's how you work when you leave. You don't work in a bubble. That's true. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Will you come back again and tell us about some of the programs you're going to do in the future? Absolutely. Thank you. Robert Reedy, thanks for joining us and thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next time on UCF Expressions. Thank you.